everybody. Welcome back. Hope you're all having a great day. Uh, today's little tutorial, we're going to go through a kind of quick and dirty discussion of, not really dirty, just like me, you know, quick and, and rough, uh, approximate uh, discussion of time series REMA forecast evaluation, right? Because what it comes down to, you know, once you get a model that is approximately correct, right, you've accounted for a well-behaved homoscedastic white noise error term you have significant coefficients what you really want out of it is the model that gives you the most accurate predictions right uh, so we'll look at just running a, a quick dynamic out of sample forecast and then a couple quick ways of evaluating uh, how accurate that forecast is and using that as a an additional specification tool comparing one model uh, to another uh, so we'll uh, we've got our we've got a blank open Stata window here. Uh, we'll start with bringing in some data. We'll do our kind of our standard go-to time series example. We're going to go to our Federal Reserve Economic Database. We'll use that Fred Use command. Uh, and again, if you haven't already, make sure you install that command SSC install Fred Use. Uh, and we're going to bring up the Nasdaq Composite Index uh, in daily frequency. So in a SDAQCOM, and that'll bring our observations in. There they are. And we've, we've seen this data before. It's got a bunch of missing observations, so let's get rid of those. So we'll drop everything if that NASDAQ is missing. So NASDAQ COM equal equal dot. And there's those 413 observations now uh, that are missing. We're going to generate a time indicator variable. So generate t equal to underscore n. We will tell Stata that that is our, our time series indicator. Uh, and then rather than doing the level of the NASDAQ index, uh, we're going to generate the return. Right? So we'll generate a new variable, call it r equal to the difference in NASDAQ relative to the one period lag, so d dot NASDAQ over L dot NASDAQ. There we go. And we take a quick look here. Our little time series plot. And we have 12,000 some odd observations and varying degrees of, of volatility at different points there. And so we want to generate a prediction model that will give us maybe a, a week's worth of out of sample forecasts. Uh, based on an ARIMA specification. So getting the correct ARIMA specification, that's a topic for uh, another day and another video. Uh, but let's just kind of jump into it using the ARIMA command on this return. And again, we would play around with it. We would look at the, uh, the correlogram, the autocorrelation function, the partial autocorrelation function, and we might settle on something like this. So in ARIMA 2.2, we also, of course, want to verify the, uh, the stationarity right, of the sequence. But this looks pretty good once it comes up here. And always the, the awkward wait for state output going through our likelihood. I could do some ASMR while we wait. No? Okay. Anyway, once it comes up, our uh, our coefficients are going to be significant. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do all this uh, again. All right, so this is our full sample uh, set of, of estimates. So we've got our two autoregressive lags, our two moving average lags. Everything's significant at well beyond 1%. Everything is looking good. Uh, but again, what we want to do is replicate this out of sample forecasting procedure, right? So we're going to do what we would call that ex post out of sample forecast, where we restrict our estimation sample and then try to predict those few observations, right, uh, that are observable, observable in the data set but not used in estimation, right? So that way we get the, the benefit of doing an out of sample forecast, but we can actually evaluate the accuracy kind of before we use this to really predict what's going to happen tomorrow. So let's call that uh, command back up and we're going to run this ARIMA 
excluding, say, the last five days or so. So we're going to run this if time is less than, say, 12,061. I think that'll give us about five days worth of, uh, of out of sample observations. So now we have to stall again and we wait for the, uh, the estimation to come up. Uh, and then this will be the, the set of estimates that we'll base our forecast on. Uh, and of course we could do this one observation at a time as a rolling forecast. Again, that'll be a, a topic for another day. Uh, but here we're gonna do kind of all, all of those uh, five or six out of sample observations all at once. So we wanna get a predicted return. So let's go predict r hat, but we're gonna use two things. We're gonna, we're gonna use the dynamic option, which is gonna base one day's forecast on the previous day's forecast, right? So we'll go be able to go multiple periods out of sample. And we're gonna start that dynamic forecast at the last observation used in estimation. Right? So we just go dynamic and then in parentheses, 12059. Right? And that'll be where this forecast begins. Okay? So that's gonna bring us a new variable, r hat, into our data set. And of course the first uh, evaluation tool is just the whole eyeballs, right? So let's just take a look at the time series plot of the actual return r and the predicted return r hat, uh, you know, just over that end of sample period. So if, say, t is greater than 12, 12,050. And I always like to put in a, a little reference point. So an X line at the beginning of our of our dynamic out of sample period. So in this case, 1260. So obviously we're not capturing the, the highs and lows of our uh, of our actual volatility, right? Our our predicted line. It does fluctuate, right? Looks like on average it's it's uh, above zero, but definitely not capturing the the full magnitudes of those day by day changes. So the visual doesn't look too promising, but let's let's take it a few steps further. Right? So the first thing we want to do is just calculate how far off are we, right? Each observation's prediction versus the actual outcome. So we can generate a new variable, call it FE, right? Forecast error. That's just going to be that gap, R minus R hat. And of course, some of these are going to be positive, some are going to be negative. So if we do sort any sort of totaling or averaging, they're going to cancel each other out. So our next step is going to be to get the squared forecast error. So we can generate that SFE, square forecast error, equaling just that gap squared each observation. Right? And then kind of our overall measure of, uh, of quality of fit here would just be the average of those squared forecast errors. Uh, and again, if we were going to do any sort of hypothesis testing based on this, we would want to control for degrees of freedom, right? So instead of just the, the sum of the squared forecast errors divided by uh, n, the number of observations total, we would do n minus k minus 1, right? But for just the purposes of comparison, we can just take the simple average, right? So we could just use the summarize command in Stata. But again, we only want to get this for our out of sample period. So let's summarize giving us the mean if time is you know, greater than 1259. That'll put us into that out of sample forecast period. So we've got our eight observations with a mean square forecast error here of 0.0003755. Now again, is that is that a good number? We can't really say. It didn't look good visually. But what we could do is run some alternative models, run it as an ARIMA 1-1, ARIMA 3-3, account for uh, a GARCH process, account for possible uh, structural breaks, right? All these different things we'd want to do. We want to see, well, did it actually help? Does it give us a better uh, accuracy of our forecast? So this would be kind of our baseline. One other really nice thing to be able to do, uh, like we saw, we're not capturing the 
the magnitudes of those returns, but we would want to know how well are we capturing the sign, right? If we could at least predict when the market's going to go up or down, that's going to be really valuable as well. So we just want to calculate kind of a, a like a classification table like you would do following a, uh, a logit probit type model. Uh, we just want to get the percentage of observations that are going in the right direction. And this is kind of a neat uh, combination of commands here. So we can do, let's generate a new variable, call it CP. Right? So that's going to be our kind of correct positive return predictions. You can call it whatever you want. And we want to generate a dummy variable that takes on the value one when two things are true, when the actual return is positive and our prediction is positive when we get it right. So in our command here, we go CP equals, and then in parentheses, we put in the conditions under which we want this to be coded as a one, right? And we want it to happen when the actual return is positive and when the predicted return, r hat, is positive. So whenever Stata is combining uh, scenarios, right, combining conditions, and is always uh, put in with that little ampersand sign, shift seven on your keyboard. Right? So we hit enter, okay. And before we look at that, let's do the, the other possibilities. Well, we also wanna know how well did we predict downturns in the market? So let's generate another variable. Okay. You could be more creative if you want, you don't need to. I'll call it CN, so this will be our correct negative predictions, equals one under the condition that the real return, let's say is less than or equal to zero, and our predicted return, r hat, is less than or equal to zero. And let's go ahead and take a, uh, take a gander at what we did here. I said gander. That's right. Let's take a look. So let's scroll all the way down. We only really care about this for the, the out of sample period. So for these last uh, eight observations or so. So here's our forecast errors. Here's our squared forecast errors. And here's our, our dummy variables that we created. Right? So let's look at that first predicted value here at time period 1260. The real uh, return was positive here. Our prediction was negative, so we didn't get that right. So we have zeros in both cases. Next one down, real return was positive, prediction was positive. So we get a one in the correct positive dummy variable. Right? And so on down the line, positive, positive, check, we got a one. Negative, negative, we got that one right as well. And so on down the line. So the last step is just to combine those two things, right? So let's generate a new variable, which is called correct. That's gonna be the sum of our correct positives and our correct negatives. And then let's see what percentage of the time we got this right. So let's summarize correct again, only over that out of sample forecast. That's where our valuation is gonna be focused. So uh, if time is greater than 12.59, so starting at 12.60, and we get a 0.875, so 87.5% of the time, we were in the right direction, right? We predicted a positive, and it was actually positive. We predicted a negative, it was actually negative. So use that in conjunction with our square, uh, our mean square forecast error up here, again, to get the best possible model. So if you can respecify the model and get a number higher than this, that's gonna be an increase in performance. Okay. So an easy way to measure to compare across different models uh, and also some nice interpretation. Right? So as always, put any questions you have in the comments and I will see you next time.